This is an interesting project because it started last year and now it's coming full circle. So we're on the corner of High Street and Fifth Avenue on the east side in the heart of the Short North or the northern part of the Short North. We're mocking up our uh, public art piece that will be installed this spring. Uh, these white papers will eventually be carved brick, uh, but right now we're just making sure that all of the elements line up and they look good in real life on the wall. The idea behind the messenger wall is to honor people who have been key messengers in our community. And then we also wanted to pay homage to um, a former director of our organization who worked tirelessly to um, do so much good here. And the name for the wall actually comes from him. Um, his name was John Angelo. It also so happens that his last name means angel or messenger in Italian. Um, so his, his name is tied into it, but then the notion of a community messenger is really what they're trying to get across, which is someone who brings, actively brings people into the circle to work together to make whichever community they're part of better and stronger because we're all together in it. So I started thinking of how to, how to convey messages, um, message in a bottle, messenger pigeon. So what Jen came up with was sort of an abstract design that it might look like the way the wind blows or the way uh, a, a bird might fly through the air if they flap their wings. Um, and then this composition carries throughout four panels, and these panels are being installed into old window sills. This project couldn't have been done without uh, the help of my awesome studio assistant, Brooke Slobodian. So we took Jen's drawing and we put it onto paper and then we put that paper onto these wet bricks that we had stacked in the wall pattern and then traced through the paper to get the markings on there and then carved the relief pattern out of there. And now I'm using the back end of a Sharpie marker, marker to trace through the paper and trying to make sure I get enough pressure that I am indenting the wet clay bricks underneath. And then we'll peel off the paper for the, we'll call it medium reveal. Let's just go at it. These bricks are, <laughs> they're about eight pounds each, <laughs> which is, uh, pretty pretty crazy. So that the big panel has uh, 350 bricks or so. I was actually worried um, when we st stacked them as tall as we did that the ones on the bottom, because they're wet, I wasn't sure if they were going to start smushing. <laughs> it didn't, but it didn't. It didn't happen. We have 652 bricks in the panels, and then we have 20 six pressed birds. If the clay is uh, a little bit wetter on the, the side that's touching the uh, plaster, we'll get a smoother surface like that. And where it's a little bit drier, it's a little more crumbly. Um, but dare I say, this is exactly what we were going for. Unload the kiln now. Um, we fired the, the bricks, and you saw the brick clay is that, that green color. It's like a forest green color when it goes in the kiln. 
and because of the iron in the shale, it turns from green to the red color. So every brick is marked on the back uh, so that we can install them in order. I can't wait to see these up on the wall. <laughs> In taking a look at the neighborhood and seeing where we could help redefine some spaces with um, art and creativity, one of the places that emerged to us was Fifth Avenue because in many ways it's this gateway into the neighborhood. It's not, you know, the, the shiny boutique part. It's, it's the real part where real people walk around and I think that's really cool to be part of their everyday. Public art is, is needed, especially in a place like Fifth and High. Um, so it's, it's nice to be part of the beautification, but it's also important to remember where community comes from and, and who the people are living in that community. It really is part of our mission to help redefine these spaces in big creative ways with art that is lasting. As a high school art teacher, you're so much doing day-to-day -day solving problems on smaller scale. I never thought like I would do something so big and for sure not something so permanent. It's really kind of hard to wrap my mind around uh, graduating from Ohio State and, and putting a, a significant piece of permanent artwork on the corner of Fifth and High, which is the you know, beginning of the arts district in the capital city that I love.